Calling all Autobots. This is Optimus Prime. Hello, Chipara here. Today we're going to be playing a game that never came out in the US. It is Transformers Call to the Future, also known as Transformers Assault for the PS2. This is a 2003 game exclusive to Japan, and it actually focuses on the G1 Transformers continuity, so the good old 80s my favorite part of Transformers continuity and mythology. Uh, the game is got a bit of a bad rap. Uh, I've started to play it. This is my gameplay. These are going to be my thoughts. Um, I've heard that this is the worst Transformers game ever. It is not, but I'll explain why, and I'll explain some of the logistics as to why this game did not come out in the U.S. in just a minute. Okay, so firing up this game from Takara, uh, as I said before, this is Transformers Call to the Future. This game came out in 2003, um, just a year before Transformers, which is actually the Transformers Armada game, came out in the U.S., celebrating that continuity of cartoons uh, that came out in the U.S. Uh, and that is actually a very overlooked game in and of itself, that Transformers PS2 game. Uh, one of the best Transformers games. Uh, ever released, and I put it in high regard even comparison to the War for Cybertron Fall Cybertron games. So going into it again, you've got some nice FMVs for this game. This was only released in Japan, celebrates the G1 continuity, uh, and it was never released in the U.S. It's got those classic uh, looks to the characters, that classic continuity. Uh, you've got Megatron, you've got Galvatron, you've got Optimus Prime, you've got Hot Rod, you've got Jazz. You've got all these characters that are from the original continuity in their original looks. Now, um, in terms of what goes on in this game, is that you essentially have a, a bit of a time jump back and forth. So you start off with, he's called Convoy in, in Japan, but you have Optimus Prime and the Autobots. Um, right during probably the second season of the G1 continuity, that's back in the 80s, the original continuity. And then um, they're trying to... Uh, thwart Megatron, who I think is called something like the Emperor of Destruction or something in this in this game, or in Japan, um, that was what he was called. So what happens is that this is going on, they're going against Megatron as if it's a regular episode of the cartoon, and then you've got Galvatron and Hot Rod, or Rodimus Prime, uh, uh, that, is, that appear after the movie uh, timeline that have now gone back into the past, and so you've got um, all these storylines kind of intersecting now that you've got Rodimus has now taken over with the Matrix of Leadership, leadership, I should say. And so what has happened is that you've got characters in the future, uh, a couple of years in the future. Actually, I think that's longer than that since it happens in 2005. Uh, so quite a long time uh, that you've got characters from 2005 that are jumping back into the 80s and are battling alongside or against Megatron and Optimus. So you've got Rodimus meeting Optimus Prime uh, uh, when he was still alive. Uh, and you've got Galvatron interacting with Megatron in this cross of timelines. So it's pretty interesting. And we're going to go into it and see how this plays. And there's plenty of uh, harken back to the original continuity with respect to the logo of Transformers. You've got like when you've got the cuts in the cartoon where you've got the flipping of the um, Decepticon and um, Autobots logo insignia uh, you've got that in the game as well some pretty cool moments you've got plenty of uh, it's all uh, narrated in english it's got the option for english subtitles um, but uh, some of the fmvs are still going to be in the original japanese in terms of the, letter the lettering but most of this game is in english at least most of the the spoken word transformers and i should have uh, held on to that um, that menu music. I'll probably go back to it later on in the video. So the way this game plays, it's almost like playing Rock'em Sock'em Robots. And yeah, Rock'em Sock'em Robots is fun for like 30 seconds, but an entire game of Rock'em Sock'em Robots where it's just mashing thing uh, these robots together um, and then just somebody's head gets popped off. It's not fun in an entire video game form. And to be honest with you, to be honest with you, um, uh, this game feels more like even high school 
Like you've got your posse, you've got two friends behind you, you're going down a hallway, and you've got this this other posse that's gonna go against you, and you send your friends out and they start battling the other gang, the other group of teenagers, and then they kind of like disperse and it's everyone going after you uh, that your friends have bailed on you and you're just getting beat up in the corner. That's how this game plays over and over again. There's a lot of cheap shots. Um, there's a lot of ganging up uh, on your character with no help and you don't have the strength. You feel like a weakling in this game. Head out instead of roll out. So as you can hear right there, um, you've got the Decepticons up to no good, um, uh, uh, trying to go after a power plant and they're trying to cause a big explosion. But the thing about this game uh, that's different from what you would expect for uh, um, a, an American uh, US game is that there's a lot of introspective moments. It's almost like you know, what you expect from Metal Gear. There's all these cinematics or in-game uh, cutscenes that are last 5, 10, 15 minutes in between levels, and it's just kind of introspection. It's kind of learning about the world. Uh, you could just expect to get to the action with Transformers, but they're talking about, between each level, they're talking about who has the advantage. They're talking about, well, you know, we came to Earth as Autobots, to, um, you know, for peaceful means. They're saying that Earth is peaceful, uh, that Earth people are peaceful, and yet they're bringing their battle to Earth, even though Earth isn't peaceful, but that's the way they portray it, that they're having these conversations, these introspective conversations that if we keep on battling, we're kind of really defeating the purpose of being on Earth in the first place. So there's, there's deep conversations between Autobots and Decepticons over and over and over again, and I find myself like skipping to these cutscenes. So you choose like a prime character they're going to play as, and then you're going to choose your posse. And you continually gain characters and posse over the course of the game. So you got Jazz, Wheeljack, and I've now added Bumblebee. Uh, but they're all, um, they're all lousy anyway. They kind of bail on you. So I was, uh, again, a lot of this game is in English, and you have the option to choose these menu screens to be in English. Um, and then, which is completely pointless, you identify like how they're going to be in terms of the squad how, and their placement. Uh, in battle. Are they going to go in front of you? They're going to go behind you? They're going to be on the side? And it's all pointless to me because, you know, they just bail on you anyway. They, they offer like maybe 5% support when you're in battles. So here we go. This is the meat of the game. And you got some special moves. If you can let, there we go. Can't use too much of that. And see, you just get whooped. And your friends just completely bailed on you. And I completely use that with nobody around me. So you got this EP, which is like a, a, a bar on the top of the screen that is for special moves. And I'm doing terrible here on this controller because um, I'm used to playing it on the Steam Deck, and that's where I'm emulating it. Um, so I, I, oh, come on. So there, there's my Autobot friends just chilling in the corner while I'm getting whooped. But the whole purpose, uh, uh, you know, in terms of your strategy is that you want to take out some of these chrome domes, these guys, um, and then they'll drop uh, little bits of energy and they'll drop um, stuff to build up your EP meter so you can do those special moves that you just saw um, of being able to use your... Um, use your trailer to open up and uh, blast them that way. Um, and there's also, um, if you put, press two of the buttons together, there you go, you get his, uh, his like laser axe. But of course, I've run out of EP because that all uses that special meter. And sometimes, in terms of if you really get into it, 
you go into this mode where it's like a um, just a, a, a you just kind of take them out with a bunch of punches. It's like a quick time almost event where you're just kind of going at it. And they've got these little uh, again short stages where you're t uh, going against the guy, uh, this group of you know respawned enemies over and over again until you get to the next stage. Uh, and they break it up with different um, with different objectives. So it's not just you're beating up on a bunch of guys. Some of them they have you go through a minefield. Some of them it has you go um, against a clock against something. Oh, you actually did something. So one of the reasons why I'm assuming this came out in Japan, besides the quality issues, um, and I'm assuming that, um, come on, I'm assuming that uh, Transformers Armada was what they wanted uh, everyone to focus on, or at least get built up for this new kind of rebooted continuity. They didn't want to have to go back to the original G1 continuity. They're just whooping me. Come on. All right. See, you don't even get uh, uh, you can't even get up. So uh, with this Japan continuity, there you go. The headmasters, as they're identified in the original uh, Japan continuity, were um, kind of like more of an ancient uh, uh, Cybertronian. Um, clan as you will uh, and I'm like there's a there we go we get into this button mashing moment where I just take on this guy but um, the headmasters uh, are completely different in the Japanese continuity than they are in the American continuity um, essentially what happened was uh, of course America got the uh, four seasons of Transformers, but Japan uh, technically only got the three. They didn't get that final TV movie that closed out the G1 continuity back in the 80s. Uh, they created their own series, Headmaster. So it's essentially like you've got the first three seasons of Transformers continuity that are the same between America and Japan, and then you've got um, a kind of a, a divergent path in the timeline where uh, Japan's own Headmasters takes over. And whooped. And so um, that is the continuity that's kind of focused on here. So in season three, at the tail end of it, there's this virus that gets out. Uh, it even gets Rodimus Prime. And then you have um, Optimus that comes back to life or is revived since, the, uh, since his death in the movie. Um, and that, of course, continues in the Japanese continuity, but different uh, things happening. Um, from what happened in the U.S. So um, this has the uh, Rodimus. It has um, Galvatron, of course, since Megatron had died and been revived, or not died, but uh, he had been um, reformatted uh, to be Galvatron. And I have no special move, and I just died. Oh, no, I still got a little bit in me. Um, you, um, you've got these characters from the Headmaster series, uh, and you've got the characters that you recognize from the post-Transformers, the movie world, that jump back in time and are now in kind of the season two of G1 continuity. The windows are pointed away from you, but you're being blown back. And so it's even more difficult to, like, get a shot at it. And you've got these guys that are sniping on the side while you're getting kicked on the ground. So much cheapness going on here. And your buddies, um, you can choose like different modes uh, of what they're supposed to be doing in terms of guarding you. Um, so there's different selections in terms of what they're supposed to do in terms of strategy on this defensive line. But it amounts to nothing because they don't do anything for you. Listen to me, guys. Please come back. I'll see you. Bye. 
Autobots transform and roll out. Amazing. A booby trap that actually catches boobies.